Welcome to AEHelp.com's IELTS Test Preparation videos. You will now see a candidate from Jordan score an exceptional band-aid for her performance on the speaking interview, followed by an explanation for her score. We have partnered with Cambly, a world-class app that lets you connect with a native English speaking tutor anywhere, anytime to improve your fluency, pronunciation, vocabulary, grammar, and natural language for the next time you sit the test. Cambly has been generous enough to give this code to get a 10% discount, also in the stream description. As well, they have given this code so you can try Cambly for the first 15 minutes for free. Download Cambly today and begin improving your English so you can get these high band scores for your next speaking interview. Now watch and learn. Welcome to the speaking portion of the IELTS exam. My name is Adrian. I will be your interviewer for this part of the test. Uh, what is your full name? My full name is Layan Haddad. My surname is Haddad. Please just call me by my given name, Layan. Okay, Layan. The speaking has three parts. I will give you instructions for each, and I'm going to record this for marking purposes. May I see your identification? Sure, here's the passport I used to register for this exam. Thank you. Okay, here's your passport Thank back. You. For part one, I will ask you a few questions to get to know you better and some questions on a general topic. How did you get to this exam? I got here by public transportation. I first took a metro, then a bus. All in all, it took me about 25 minutes. How will you go back home? I plan to go back home the same way I got here, by bus, then a metro, but in the opposite direction, of course. Let's talk about books. How often do you read a book? I indulge in books as reading is one of my passions. So I read every day for an average of about 90 minutes. My current read is In the Dream House by Carmen Machado. Where can you buy books? There are physical bookstores, libraries, and online stores where people, including myself, can purchase books. For In the Dream House, I bought it off Amazon. Which types of books do you like reading? I like both fiction and non-fiction titles, including biographies, mystery, and science fiction. Um, for the In the Dream House, it's a very provocative uh, memoir. Which types of books do you dislike? That's a very interesting question. Allow me a moment. Well, I think I'm not really into technical books, like how to fix a car. It's just not my cup of tea. What is the next book you plan to read? I've actually been giving this a bit of thought and I've decided to read Bossy Pants by Tina Fey. I think this novel is funny and light and should be a refreshing change to my current read. Where is a good place to read a book? A quiet, nice room could be a good example, just um, laying on the couch with a cozy blanket would make it a very good place to read a book. Also, um, a park on a sunny day or at the beach would also, good, would also make a good place. How have reading books changed? I think that reading books nowadays have changed greatly with the advancements of technology. For example, there are devices that many people are now resorting to, like e-readers, mobiles, and tablets, to read books from, as well as softwares. So there are now many software advancements, like translations and instant definitions, that help the readers understand the text better. 
Okay, that is the end of part one. Now we will continue with part two. For part two, here is a card with some questions. Don't turn that over yet. Here is some note paper and a pen. You will have one minute to look at the questions on the card, think about your answer, and then you will have two minutes to speak. You can take notes in the one minute if you wish. I will tell you when to start, when to stop. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, then your one minute preparation time begins now. Go ahead, turn over the card. Okay, Lion, your one minute preparation time is up. Please begin speaking. In fact, I've been actually planning to buy the Kindle Paperwhite, which is the e-reader manufactured by Amazon. This is a small uh, tablet um, that is about 20 by 10 centimeters. It's also, it has four gigabytes of storage, so it can store up to thousands of books. Uh, I'm planning to buy it off of Amazon as it's their product. And I think that Amazon is one of the major online retailers for this and for millions other books. I think that this e-reader is not only lightweight, but is, is also very convenient because I can fit it easily into my purse and the latest model is even waterproof. Um, in order to buy this uh, tablet, firstly, I need to put aside some money. So fortunately, I've been squirreling uh, away some, some money and this tablet cost around 150 US dollars. I would also need an Amazon account, an address of course, or a post box to have it delivered to. I've chosen uh, to buy this e-reader because I find it not to only uh, work in ample light, but also in dim conditions, as compared to other devices like tablets and mobile, where I always feel that they hurt my eyes. Okay, uh, your two minutes is up, Lyon. I'm going to stop you there, and I will take back the uh, note paper, the sure. card, the questions, and now we will continue uh, with uh, part three. For part three, I will ask you some more questions related to the topic of part two. Uh, let's talk about choosing products. With so many choices these days, how do people decide what product to buy? Well, I think these days, shoppers' choices are highly impacted um, by their online search, as well as customer reviews. Of course, availability and price would be some factors that they would take to make their final decision. For example, that's what I took into consideration when I decided to buy the e-reader. How has technology helped customers to select the right product? I think the technology has really aided people when it comes to shopping. So now people have more goods accessible and at more competitive prices. Also, devices like smartphones made it easier for people to compare prices and goods online anywhere and anytime. Is this technology always beneficial? I think at most times it is beneficial, but when it comes to shopping clothes, I think it might be a bit awkward. So maybe the clothes you purchase may not fit you, or they might not be as, as they are when delivered. Will the ways people select and purchase goods uh, in the future be different than today? Yes, I do believe uh, that it will be very different. For example, there are many uh, advancements in commerce, like um, devices of augmented reality, like Google Glasses, for example. Um, using Google Glasses for shopping, you can just look at objects and just select the frame. Let's talk about saving money. What is good advice to give to individuals for saving their hard-earned money? In relation to what we were discussing just now, I think buying products online um, 
gives the opportunity for customers to find prices that are uh, very competitive. I think it's very important that people compare prices online as well as look for coupons. Those coupons could offer extra discount on prices for individuals. As well, I think people should also strive to set aside at least 5% of their earnings each month into, an, into a high interest saving account at a bank. Is this easy or difficult to do? I think it's fairly easy using technology to compare prices online, but I do also believe that it's extremely difficult these days to put aside some money as life is becoming very expensive these days. How has saving money changed in the past several decades? That's a tough question. Allow me a moment to think. I think that saving money has become more complicated these days compared to the past to setting aside a goose egg. What I mean is that everyday life has become more expensive, so you don't really find money that you don't need to put aside. Also, I think investment opportunities like real estate and stocks have become more volatile. What are the causes of this change? I think the main cause for this is the overprinting of money by the governments. That is the end of part three that concludes the speaking portion of the exam. You will have your mark in about two weeks time with the other sections. Have a great rest of your day, Lyon. Please remember to take your passport with you. Thank you very much. Have a lovely day as well. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. So why does Lyon deserve this Band-Aid score? which according to the IELTS means she is a very good user of the English language. Well, firstly, she answers all of the questions accurately and with good detail using explanations and examples. Furthermore, she's got excellent grammatical range. She uses compound and complex sentences including conditionals and adjective clauses to give very good descriptions for her ideas. In part two, she does not repeat herself, but rather she elaborates and goes into detail. Furthermore, Lyanne's fluency and pronunciation are outstanding. Although it's not perfect, it is very clear for English speakers to understand her. In addition, Lyanne has great lexical resource. Watch the video again and write down all of the idiomatic language that Lyanne uses to color and express herself more deeply and accurately. Repeat Lyanne's answers and improve your English for the next time you sit the IELTS exam. To watch many more useful videos like this one to get those high band scores for the next time you sit the exam, visit and join us at aehelp.com. Also, download and link the app Academic IELTS Help with over a hundred hours of video lessons, six original exams and a fully interactive course with strategies and tips that work you're sure to succeed. Begin learning today. Subscribe to our channel. Click over here. Watch more videos. Click right here. Or click our IELTS Hero for over 100 hours of complete video lessons and six original practice exams to help you pass IELTS.